we're into the big time you might call it the matchup worthy of a cup final the first of the knockout quarterfinals in the cup competition the losers go into the second tier competition the plate the last time they met was in a final in new zealand a year ago and that one went to extra time when fiji won and overall in balance well their meetings have been uh, pretty even in 23 internationals it's been 12 to 11 in Fiji's favor but Fiji remember the world champions this is the side that has won the last six encounters with South Africa and led by number six the legend of sevens rugby Waisali Serevi actual captain on the field though is Mosesi Bola Bola two newcomers watch out they've made a big impact number and Sarah Vanua and twinkle toes number 10 William Ryder South Africa well a very good outfit to Mokwain as the power up front Rhino Benjamin the skills behind it should be a cracker and the referee will be from New Zealand Matt Stanish Matt Brown is alongside me as we kick off this should be a great encounter this is going to be fantastic Nigel this is the matches that everybody's waiting for to see these big teams go at each other right when it's all on the line the knockout stage Renfrid Darzell for South Africa to Grant Reese in only his second tournament away by the experienced Schumann from Mbobo this again is Dazel, creative in the midfield of Howard Noble has the pace can he control it Fiji under real pressure behind their own line kick the ball away pulling out of the way pulling out of the, way. Out of the way and so a penalty against South Africa Fiji bit of a let -off there. little change in tactic from the South Africans playing to the weather with a little bit of wet maybe putting that ball on the ground and see what happens nearly came off don't often see uh, top teams kicking in sevens, but Fiji just want to get this uh, away from their own danger area into touch. They get the throw in, of course. It was a full penalty. The throw in from touch, far side. Very tense atmosphere here in this great setting. What a success the staging has been here in Petco Park. This unique occasion as baseball gives way uniquely to rugby union seven aside world series and a knock through in the line out is favorable to fiji now watch this man this is william Ryder, the new star but they know it they've collared him they've contained him didn't give him an inch and a very ferocious follow-up too by rhino benjamin this is what fiji don't like isn't it real in your face pressure penalty to south africa Matt. And that was all created by Benjamin. Benjamin very strong, making the tackle, getting back to his feet, contesting the ball, and forcing Fiji to come in and go to the ground and get the penalty for yeah, South Africa. Now the South Africans have a chance five. inside Fiji's 22. Jonathan Mokwena. This is Schumann trying to create the overlap on the wide outside with uh, Rhino Benjamin held. No punches pulled here. Schumann again didn't go quite to hand it went on the bounce to Bobo but there's Schumann all oh, the hand of the Fijian defender got in the way Schumann claims it was a deliberate knock on it's tense out there well both te these teams look like they're afraid of something happening right at the exact moment so you can see the tension on all of their faces on this all 14 of the players out there Fiji reigning world champions this their national sport South Africa won the cup final in the opening tournament in Dubai runners-up in uh, Georgia after that they want a title again so do Fiji they haven't won one this season and they're used to winning here's the danger here's the try South Africa to score it and it was Fijians defensive errors that let South Africa in here Kobani Bobo again this has got to be a, a tactical change by coach Paul true they're kicking the ball through the ball is fielded but not cleanly popped up to the player and it's Bobo who grabs it and dots down this is one of those plays Nigel where if they've had success with it I think we're gonna see more of it throughout this match well it's a good time to score your first try in the tournament this remember is knockout no second chances here we had the round robin pools yesterday to qualify for this knockout stage. Sarevi, can he use his influence? Here's the young man, William Ryder, who's uh, just made such great waves. And here he comes now. On the return is Saravanua. Ryder, they'll not catch him, will they? But Noble is quick, he did. He 
cornered him and kept him out and not many people can do that tremendous pace from the new cap Howard Noble, Noble from Natal well when you see William Ryder get that ball and streak down the sideline like that you think a certain try but Noble was able to rein him in shocking terrific defense that was by South Africa now that is a sight one seen very seldom does it not end up with a Fijian try but these two opponents know each other's games so well as they meet in this uh, eight tournaments World Series this is the eighth series of this world competition little chip and chase and the follow-up of Nabuliwanga pressure on the South African goal line the dead ball line and what's going to be here it's Naevo who's been called across for that uh, robust tackle keep it down he says it was dangerous but not criminally so <laughs> that is just you don't want to be on the receiving end of that sort of encounter do you well, he was sort of dancing around there not sure whether to put it down and Naevo made the decision for him absolutely he is a man mountain this 29 year old He's playing his 15s rugby in Japan, but he is the great ball winner for Fiji. Terrific clearance kick deep into the Fijian half, which Ryder couldn't uh, contain. We don't want yellow cards because people are silly. Nigel, I think we've seen more Smart, kicks right? just in this match than I've seen in most of the play so far on yesterday and today. It's unusual. It says something about the tension, and of course, ball is slippery. There's been this light drizzle here. It's warm. Pitch conditions perfect, but just that drizzle. It's Schumann winning the line out ball. Awkward one for Bobo. But he slips the tackle well. And now with Gar Grant Reese. Another of the new players in the uh, ball true squad. Chip and chase for Howard Noble. He's got real pace to bounce his kind though for Salavanua. And Ryder, those little dancing feet, but that's gone forward, I would think. It has. And Fiji are under pressure here. They're not looking comfortable as they usually do on the ball. Some of it might be the wet conditions, but at the same time, they just don't have that continuity that Fiji normally display with their passes going directly to hand. The ball seems to be bouncing quite a bit more. And when that happens, there's always going to be difficulty in handling in these types of conditions with the ball just a little bit slick. Into the last half minute of this first half of seven minutes. And it's South Africa with that converted try. You must go in. You must go in. Well, there's been a big build up to this encounter. By a quirk of fate, they haven't met since a year ago. And that was in a cup final that went to extra time 27 22. It ended to Fiji. At the moment, it's 7 0. Can South Africa get the revenge a year on? Jikobani Bobo, who scored the opener. Loose pass. Kept in play by Mokwene. He might have done better to let it go into touch. There's the hooter. Is it a turnover for Fiji? No, it's a penalty to South Africa as Fiji lost their discipline a bit and away goes Marius Schumann on the penalty tap. Schumann, nice feed to Benjamin. He's a good player. Benjamin covering and uh, slipping through the tackle of Sarevi. He follows it up back on his feet to score at the death. And there, well, I sometimes wonder why Sari Sarevi has been the king of sevens. But has his day just passed? Here he was, not able to hold on to Benjamin, who recovered, went over, and took uh, quite a blow for his efforts, but what a crucial score. That well, was one of those situations where Scoobin gets through, and you think he's going to be caught. Ryder's right in front of him, but the ball goes to Benjamin. Benjamin is able to get down the touchline. The tackle is made by Sarevi, but he just can't hold him, and when the wet conditions, Benjamin's able to slide, get back to his feet, dive over, and take a blow to the side of the head as he's dotting the ball down. <laughs> that was a big blow too. Accidental, of course, but uh, quite an impact on the young man, the 23-year-old. He's part of the, the Stormers uh, Super 14 side in Thanks. South Africa. Thanks. And some obvious concern on the Springbok sideline. Benjamin's the key to this team so far. He's playing all the good defense and their try score for this second. You're absolutely right, Matt. I think you've hit the nail on the head there. He is the key at the moment. It used to be Stefan Basson, but ben Benjamin has stepped up as his uh, worthy successor to be the most influential player in the squad. They have a lead of 12, and that is a sensational conversion. Absolutely brilliant to give a 14-point lead at the break. So South Africa, in sight of upsetting the world champions here in San Diego. They lead 
14 points to nil at halftime. Well, this first try came from a Kobani Bobo kick through. The ball was misfield. It tried to be popped up by Sarah Vanua, and Bobo was there to catch the flop and put it down. The next drive very at the very end of the first half. Schoolman off to Benjamin. Benjamin able to bone, go down, reach up, dive over, and score the try. And there is the uh, end result of that uh, blow to the head. And uh, Rhino Benjamin, I'm not sure, is he fit to continue? He's being looked at by the medics. But no, they've said that uh, we need you for later. And the expectation of uh, holding on to this lead to win and make the cup semi-finals. But Rhino Benjamin off. Looking a little bit groggy there. And we've learned, in fact, from the sideline that Nabudiwanga has actually been given a yellow card. Now, we missed that. I didn't see, but it obviously we were paying attention to the injured player. So that means, crucially, Fiji are down to six players for the opening two minutes of the second half. So that makes their comeback even more uh, difficult to achieve. On the referee, Mike there, Nigel, I think I heard the referee, Matt Stanish, say there was no need to dive on the player after he was already on the ground in the try zone. Seeing that replay, too, it was, uh, it was literally OTT. And uh, I think on, in retrospect, having said it was accidental, it was more stupid than uh, deliberate. But you cannot do that. So Nabudiwaka, key man, sits out for two minutes. Born of frustration more than anything else, Nigel, I think. Not a dirty play. Second half, Fiji trail by 14. They are down a man with Nabuliwaka in the Sinbin. Naevo loves to take people on full frontal, but uh, it didn't work out well this time, although there's a penalty as the player came round. Offside for South Africa. Now they've got to do something quickly here. I've seen Fiji come back time and again, but with six men... That's a big ask against South Africa, of all people. Oof, the handling a bit dodgy as well, number it was there. This is uh, Naivo. What a player he was in helping Fiji to win the Rugby World Cup 7s in 2005, the World Championships. This is number again. Slips one tackle, looks to offload, and does to Serevi. Serevi's first try of the tournament, and the maestro helps Fiji on their way back. Waisali Serevi. First played sevens for Fiji in 1989, and now at 38, playing a crucial part. And look how fit and well preserved he is, and he still has those skills. But this was made by number. He took made two tacklers get onto him, and that created the angle for Shrevi to go around the outside and score. His first try of the tournament, and with the conversion by him, it stays within touching distance for Fiji. Try to keep it calm and remember they scored that one with six men on the field to South Africa's seven. And with Fiji, no one senses all things are possible. And the best restart retention percentage in the entire tournament, 50% of the restarts, and this one's difficult for South Africa. And forced eventually to kick the ball out. That's going to be Fiji ball. Bit of basketball play there in the baseball stadium where rugby union is the spectacle. Cuts and thrust, excitement and tension. 14-7, five minutes to play. A place in the semi-final at stake. They both want it desperately. They both expect it. Their nations expect it. And back home in Fiji, where we're live throughout this tournament, they will be gripped around their television sets on those beautiful islands. It's the national sport. And the two minutes are up. Nabuliwaka is back on the park. Fiji need a try and conversion to get on terms. And of course, just to tell you that if it is even score at the end of the tie, the 14 minutes, it goes into sudden death. First scorer is the winner in extra time. And so Revy, remarkably fit. Fiji's first professional many years ago, but 38 now. Still influential and as coach, of course, as well as occasional player. Doesn't usually start these days, but uh, I think he needs that to put that influence on his team to keep the discipline. I tend to see him more often in the early rounds than in these knockout phases. Oh, clever by Ryder, and he's back here. Ah, just touches it down. 
Well, deft with the foot, skilled with the hands, and there a little bit of vision, making the most of a scramble pass away. William Ryder puts Fiji right back, and it's all on the conversion as to whether it will be level points at 14 all. It's 14 12. Look at this. Ball came out a little crooked out of that scrum, and there was pressure by the South Africans. Ryder did all he could do, which was to kick it through and dot it down. And Sarevi adds the conversion. They are back. It's 14 all, and three minutes, 22 seconds to play. Never count Fiji out. Never, ever. Switch kick. Sarevi wants the position. Offers South Africa the throw in. Interesting tactic. Well, they want to keep it down in this end, put pressure. If South Africa is going to do anything now, they're going to have to go 95 meters to score. And I Thanks. think the Fijians realize that there's going to, it's, they have a lot of confidence that they can prevent that from happening. And Fiji have the massive mountain of Meli Sakawa Naevo in this lineup behind him, the captain Vola Vola. But Skuman's the key man here for South Africa and he's missed it. And it's gone to Sakao, is it? Just a couple of meters out. And they've gambled well, and it paid off. There's an overlap here. Surely Ryder can offload. Or Ryder goes himself, slips the tackle, and Ryder does it again. Oh, they are sensational, and uh, there's a little bit of off-the-ball stuff here, which uh, Mabuduwaka didn't like and uh, followed through. But the key thing, the try is scored. And what a brilliant bit of tactical play, instigated by Sarevi with that kick that paid such dividends. Well, the theory here was that going to the lineout was going to be an advantage for the Fijians, and it was. The ball came out to Ryder, and he had the pace and the quickness to get past Scubin and score the try. That's a big one, Nigel. Oh, it's huge. Absolutely huge with less than two minutes to play. Fiji 14 nil down, are leading 19-14. And Sarevi questioned whether he should start, but he's been influential as ever. Strokes the ball through the post. And that's an important talent. That puts added pressure on South Africa. It's 21-14. Some game, Matt. Well, now the South Africans have to score and make the conversion if they want to put this into extra time. That's going to be a tough ask again because these Fijians are very good at putting pressure on these restarts. Cup finalists a week ago losing to their South Pacific neighbors. Samoa 14-17. Semi-finalists in the previous two tournaments in the... Dubai and South Africa, not a clever restart by Ryder, big error, free ball because it has to go 10 meters, free kick to South Africa. And here's their chance now, Nigel. A minute to play, away via the Nzwandili stick, plenty of runners, enveloping tackle from Nambuliwaga to try and deny repossession, but they have it, three to two wide, Skuman trying to force it, good running here. This is Mandamurva who just come on. And in touch, saved by the interception. And Schoolman is desperate, it's tense. The throw in, not to the referee, Matt Stanish's satisfaction. Oh, no love lost here. Well, now the tension's so turning a flag into on the far side. There's a, a flag up for foul play, the touch judge on the far side. And I must say, that was a storming run by Mandamurva. He had Schoolman going with him. Could have been the score. Some spice here. In the process of breaking away from this breakdown, number well, eight, what White stepped on the back. Love, love, sweet love, and I think there's a little <laughs> bit of uh, no love lost on the he pitch. Maybe it's a, a bit of irony the from the uh, the DJ who's playing out of, over the uh, <laughs> over the <laughs> over the PA system. <laughs> Either great coincidence Good. or, or a sense of humour. Eight White. Eight White. And the Bulawaka has already been off. Is being and captain, called and across captain. Matt Stanish and the captain <coughs> Vola Vola. They're all coming across here. So what happened? Touch just report. The player on the ground over here was still on the ground as he came past. He stood on the player. Second one. He stood Second on the player. One. Second one. Intentionally. We don't stand on players. Where are you going? He stood on the player and Nabula Wanga has a red card. Notice how Mokwena come up and said second one, second one. It's the same guy, two yellow cards is a red card. So it's down to six with 45 seconds. And of course, the likelihood now he'll not be in the next round. Nabuli Wanga's a key man. And they're down to six again against South Africa, who are storming 
towards the line with 36 seconds to play. Two to one out wide. It's Howard Noble. Remember, there'll be only six. That was a forward pass, but Schumann, Schumann for the line. Can he be held up? He gets it down or doesn't he? The try is given. It still will all be on the kick, surely. Paul True looks on. The tension unbearable. It's all on the kick with 15 seconds to play. It's down to Mzwandili stick. This to level it and take it to sudden death. What a kick, what a kick, he's done it. That is a sensational conversion. Absolutely beautiful. They're trying to kick off before the Hooter. Which goes, and of course, they've only six men left. But will Fiji have the last word with Thakau setting it up? 21 apiece. Fiji with six. And the chance here with South Africa with Dazelle. The kick and chase. The chase with Ryder. Ryder's back there. It's still in play. It's not now. It's over the dead ball line. And that will mean sudden death. Extra time. And that extra time, Nigel's going to come with six men for Fiji. That's such a key factor. It's been a bit uh, of animosity out there. And of course, it ends with the sending off of Nabuliwanga for their second yellow card. And there is the problem for Fiji. I don't think so. It doesn't matter anyway. Uh, a little bit of back chat there by uh, Makwena to referee Matt Stanish asking uh, something of him. But I did notice how the South African skipper made sure the referee knew it was a second yellow car for the same guy. Just in case he didn't remember. Yes. <laughs> yes. Makwena remembered exactly who it was. <laughs> oh, he sure did. This was right at the death, Nigel, as Skubin cut through the middle. Not a great tackle by Ryder there, and he was held up. Did he just it? manage to get it down? It looks like he did get it down. I think he was losing it, but still had it in his hand, under control. I wonder. Yeah. Wow, it's been like that nip and tuck. And for Sarevi, just to cool it because it was their lack of coolness in the end that uh, allowed South Africa back into it. Just a silly bit of indiscipline there, stepping on a player after the ball was already gone, not even in the play. So it'll be five minutes, first period of extra time. First team to score, whatever score, and of course it always adds in the element which you never normally see in a, in a tie of, if you get a penalty, you can try and drop goal for those three points because any score is good enough. Normally you'd see a penalty just tapped and run, but I've obviously seen the options taken of a, a kick at goal when you get a penalty chance. It's South Africa to kick off, interestingly, because that may give Fiji early possession. Well, if there's one man who might just turn this game on its head one more time, it would be William Ryder, if they can release him. He is probably the greatest, most talented runner. But here we go, into extra time. Fiji 21, South Africa 21. But in players, it's South Africa 7, Fiji 6. The influential, powerful Schumann trying to close them down. Our Fiji away with Yandre Blom. Blom looking for the support pass to Schalk van der Merwe on the Fijian 22, but it's thrown forward. Referee looks for advantage. None comes to Fiji. They have the put in. Well, that was a great opportunity for South Africa with off the restart getting the line out. They didn't make anything of it. It looked like they had an overlap out wide, and Yandre Blum decided to take it up in hard. And then the eventual result is the ball coming out to Fiji for the scrum. Time for cool heads. And South Africa perhaps uh, should have been more thinking about avoiding contact when they have that advantage. It shoots out the scrum to South Africa's advantage. Quick ball recovery, and here's Mwandili stick. He's got Howard Noble, the real gas man outside. Here he is. Up the middle, not sure why he did that. It's Ryder. Ryder beats one. He's up the middle. Ryder goes, offloads, but into the hands. Oh, it's a balancing, bouncing ball. Into the hands of Vola Vola. And Vola Vola storming for the try line. Vola Vola goes. Vola Vola scores. Fiji wins. Oh, what sensational finale. What a tie. And what an amazing turnaround with six men by the magical South Sea Islanders.
from Fiji and the captain Moji Musesi Bola Bola wins it and gets them into the semi-finals in dramatic style. Oh, that was just an awesome bit of brilliance. That ball looked like it could have gone either way. Nigel bouncing up in the air, started by Ryder as he makes a little step around Schumann. Then he gets caught just by Noble. Ball bounces back. Stick has it, but it's batted forward, then batted back. That could have been a knock on there. It could, and it could. just comes to Vola Vola, and he's able to outrun Dazel to the line. A little bit of an attempt to grab him from behind but just too much pace from Vola Vola, and that's the way to finish off and get into the semifinals. Sensational, and uh, it ended in controversy. I was trying to work out who knocked it forward, who knocked it back, and I'm sure the referee, sometimes you sympathize. I mean, Matt Stanish, they had to think, that was that forward, was off the own player, was the player knocking it back, was the other man knocking it forward? No matter, the referee's decision's final, and what a quarterfinal to open these cup rounds that was. BG 26, South Africa 21.